An all digital version of the Xbox Series X has leaked and Phil Spencer creates confusion about Xbox again. Hi, welcome to Zika Review. A few months back, there was a huge leak about upcoming plans for Microsoft's Xbox. And among those leaks, was that we were going to get an old digital version of the Xbox. The original design or idea that we saw on those leaks was of this cylinder looking device. It kind of looked like an old school Echo device, maybe a little thicker, but kind of like the same cylindrical concept. Yesterday, there was a leak of what looks like to be a white version of the digital version of the Xbox Series X. And it's not as exciting as you will think it is, okay? And the reason is because it looks like this. It looks like an Xbox Series X without a disc, but white. And I guess kind of the idea maybe there is that the Xbox Series S is all digital and originally launched as a white version. So this time they are bringing the white digital version into this thing. Personally, I don't really like the way it looks in white. I think the black design of it looks much better than the white design. But again, we don't really have a lot of details of what we can expect from it. But as you can see it here from all the sides. And so that shows you that if this is what we're going to be getting, then, you know, uh, it's not going to be as exciting as originally thought. Now, the idea is that this is going to be unveiled during E3 or you know, during what E3 used to be during that time period, so sometime during the summer. And of course, most likely it's going to come out in, uh, at the end of the year during the holidays. I don't know if this is going to be a pro version on the leaks that we saw. There really wasn't a huge difference between the orig original Xbox Series X and the redesigned Xbox Series X. It's not going to be like a pro version, kind of like all those rumors that are around about the PS5 Pro. So I think this is going to be a redesign of the Xbox or digital for some reason. Now, if Microsoft is smart enough, my thinking would be to get rid of the Series S, which I know it's not going to happen because it sells much better than the Series X because of the price point. But it will be if you get rid of the Series S and replace it with that Series X all digital because you're losing the, the disk drive and so maybe you can charge less. So if you go, let's say, um, like what is it, $500 right now, $400, right? $500 for the Xbox Series X. If you want $400, $100 less because it doesn't have a disk drive, then just keep the Xbox Series X uh, with the disk drive and replace it with and, and have in addition the Xbox Series X all digital and get rid of the S Series S. I think that will be actually much, much better for the industry because I've maybe just about this before and people were really angry with me when I first came up with this idea. The Series S isn't a good console. The Series S has been told, said time and time again that it's a bottleneck for game production. The Series S hasn't uh, done what it was supposed to do and give you pretty much the same experience you get with the Series X, but just a little bit less. No, there's been plenty of proof by now that the Series S doesn't give you near the same experience, not even close to the same experience that you get with the Series X. Now let's talk about Phil Spencer, because Phil Spencer, again, is muddy in the waters about Xbox. We, we just got out of this huge thing about them bringing games to other uh, consoles that exploded and became a huge thing where they had to actually address it and talk about it. it wasn't a very good explanation of what their plans were, but they gave us an idea of what they were trying to do. And so, but but Phil Spencer is at it again, this time with an ex uh, uh, interview with Polygon, where he talked about having third-party digital stores coming to the Xbox. This is exactly what the call was. We asked if this meant he could see a future where other third-party stores like the Epic Store or Ichio could end up on Xbox. Spencer said he could, citing the way Microsoft handles Windows as an example. Consider our history as the Windows company, he explained. Nobody will blink twice if I said, hey, when you're using a PC, you get to decide the type of experience you have by picking where to buy games. There's real value in that. So again, as I said before, we just got out of this whole thing about Xbox bringing games to other consoles, right? 
Ended up being three games that most people don't care about anyway, so they were fine. But we're back here again where he's saying, hey, why not bring Steam into the, I mean, sorry, Epic Games into the fold and put it on Xbox? Which, okay, I, I, I get it, but at the same time, I don't, right? Because this is the thing. When an Xbox is sold, it is sold technically at a loss. And, and this is historically within the industry has been the case. The idea is that the console that you're buying costs technically more to make. And the hope is that once you buy this console, so you're going to spend money on software to play on the console, which is another reason why consoles don't come with a free game like they used to before, or at least demos anymore, right? They come with nothing. You go and you have to buy your game. You go into the Xbox store and you buy a game or you buy a game at the store. Like when you used to buy physical copies of games, Xbox gets a cut out of that sale that subsidizes the cost of that console. And so the idea is that the more people who buy the console, the more people who are going to buy games, the more money you're going to make out of those sales and you're going to be able to make up or recuperate the amount of money that you lost when you made that console and sold it to that consumer. Now, of course, that is changing. It's getting harder and harder, especially and even more so by Xbox's own hand in the whole cloud gaming thing, right? Game Pass is cheaper entrance fee to go into gaming and play games. I'm sure a lot of people convert into sales. There's an, I will say the vast majority probably don't buy a game that they play on Game Pass, unless you absolutely love it. But I'm, go I'm going to go with saying that the majority don't buy games. The idea is now if you put this Epic Store into Xbox, now you're going to get a cut out of those sales because it's on Xbox, right, by, by Microsoft, which is kind of like what they do on a Windows computer. That's what he's referring to when he says about having it on Windows. And I guess it is because you already have that relationship with Epic that he's talking about, but technically with Steam as well. Putting your game, that store on Xbox shouldn't be that much harder to do. And so you could buy a PC game that runs on PC and play it on Xbox. That's the part that doesn't make much sense to me because the only issue with that is that the game has to be optimized for PC. And so the optimization of a game is not the same on a console that it is on PC. And so that is where my confusion comes in. Would I be buying a game on the Epic Store on my Xbox to play on my PC? Or would I be buying it on my Epic Store, Xbox Epic Store to play on my Xbox? And will only games that are available for Xbox be sold through the Epic Store, meaning that now Epic has two ways to get revenue, selling Xbox games and selling PC games. But if that's the case, then wouldn't having the Epic Store selling Xbox games cannibalize the sales of your Xbox Store? Right? So here we go into this confusion again. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not angry. It makes sense from a business standpoint to say, hey, well, all these PC games that don't come to Xbox, kind of like Sony games, like Helldivers, right? Helldivers is available on PC and PS5, but it's not available on Xbox. But if you technically were able to get the Steam store on Xbox, now you could play Helldivers on Xbox. By the way, I've done some uh, Helldivers streams that are on my channel, so if you want to check those out, it turned to be, I will say, fun and chaotic. So if you are going that route, what does that mean? Like, you know, like, like Phil Spencer just throw these things out there and goes like, hey, wouldn't it be great if we did this? And you're like, kind of, yeah, but wait, how would that work? Right? And I get, and I get that Microsoft is kind of moving in that direction. I mean, perfect thing is what I just talked about, the digital version of the Xbox Series X. So it makes sense that Xbox will want to have a bigger digital store presence or a bigger digital presence for people to buy games on Xbox. And I guess turn an Xbox uh, from just being a gaming console into kind of like being a mini PC that you can use and buy games there that you could also play on your PC if you want to, but have the comfort of just using your TV for instead of having to go to your computer and do all those things, right? 
computer monitor and specs and all the stuff that a lot of people don't really want to do or care to do. And so it, it makes sense. But that is what I don't get. It's like, how, how does this work? So look, I understand that some people are going to be angry and be like, why am I even bothering being an uh, Xbox fan or Xbox supporter anymore if this is what you're going to be doing? And, and there is a valid point to that, which is kind of what a lot of people were complaining about when he came out and it's like, hey, we're going to just put some games out there on third-party consoles. And he never said anything specific about it. I guess that, that the biggest issue with that is it creates it creates a doubt on the consumer. I think I think when he throws these things out, that's the biggest issue. The biggest issue is people get confused. People try to figure out what it is you're trying to do with this product. And so I, th- I think, I feel like, hey, it's great, Phil, that you're talking about these things, but maybe choose your words carefully or explain what you're trying to say better instead of being like, hey, it will be great for the business to have more stores on Xbox, you know, great for consumer, great for creators, blah, blah, blah. What do you think about this new Xbox Series X all digital league? Do you think this is real? Do you think this is going to happen? Would you buy one if you haven't bought one or if you already have a disc one, would you buy a digital version of it? What do you think about Phil Spencer's talk about bringing third-party game stores into the Xbox? Is that something that you agree with? Is something that you hope is going to happen? Or are you angry about it? You're like, what the hell is this guy talking about? Let me know in the comment section. That is it for me. Go ahead and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Go ahead and hit that bell so you can be alerted every time we have new videos. And thank you very much for watching.